guys, we are here at All G's React, and we have guest. Guest is this. You know this one already. <laughs> oh! No introduction needed. You may remember this man right here, Sir Cash. He was in the um, Black Panther movie review that we did. Wakanda forever. That was a while. I never freeze. Well, not that far, actually. Now I think about it. What, April, maybe? Anyways, doesn't matter. But we're going to be talking about something. We're going to be talking about the past presidents that we have had since we were adults, which would be leaving Bush's era of presidency, going into Obama's, and then now the famous Trump. So we're going to be discussing certain topics on how we feel or think about the presidency as a whole and those individuals as president. So, the top of y'all want to start with first. But yes, we could definitely start that one. Want to start it off, or do you want to start it off? Uh, with define yeah. the president? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll go with it. All right. So, my opinion, what, uh, let's see, towards the end of uh, Bush's era, uh, we was heavily into, uh, I would actually say the country was kind of a little bit more united because whenever there's a central boogeyman, True. then it, then black people and white people put their differences oh, yeah. aside whenever it comes Quick. to Muslims. Mm -hmm. We'll be like, you know what? I st we still have our problems, but we'll, we'll hold we'll off on that. that. On pause. Yeah, we'll put that on pause for, you know, Muslims. And so the country was kind of more united. Either you was for the war or you wasn't. That, that was the only difference. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. no racism like, like it is more rampant towards the end of Obama, Bush, I mean, Trump era. Mm -hmm. So um, we was kind of on the more same page. But then as soon as Obama came in, he was such a stark contrast, literally, <laughs> from Bush to where then the racism started coming in big time. Mm -hmm. If you didn't like this guy in charge because traditionally our country, it's like the James Bond thing. True. You know? The Iris Elba James yeah, it's, Bond. It's, it's, been, it's been one way for so long. Why are you changing it up? You know, it's red or blue, not black and white. It's all white, red or blue. That that's essentially the whole thing. True, true that. And red, so, white, blue. Yeah, so it's very interesting. And so I think uh, what made Obama um, different was that people like charisma. You can have, you don't have to be effective when you have great charisma. You know what I'm saying? So for somebody to be very charismatic. Like, oh, man, I like watching him talk. I like listening to him. He makes jokes. You know, that interview where he caught a fly. Like, things like that that made him kind of, like, interesting. Was he effective? Can you really say he was effective? Or was he just charismatic? Well, with that, <laughs> I want to add real quick, before I forget, that the, the, the charisma has a lot to do with it. And I think part of either being a leader or even being an effective speaker, which essentially communication is the number one thing in any group, especially if you are the leader. Mm -hmm. Being charismatic keeps people's attention. You know, the mic drops, the kicking the doors after the speech, the walking off, you know, mid stupid question, like, some, some, some. Oh, okay. Did you? Oh. Wait! <laughs> Go back! You know, like, that's, that's something you, that you want to see. But it never happened before then because everybody was all either by the book or like trying to cover their book because all these different scandals, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, th I think charisma definitely has a lot to do with being an effective speaker, effective communicator, and in part, be or in turn, being an effective leader. But continue. So, but if you if you pull back the charisma, and then you start looking at the actual substance of what he was doing. You know, uh, Obama's biggest couple achievements, if if anything, is the uh, health care, Obamacare, and then gay marriage. That yeah. those those is what you know Obama for, and uh, and then that's when the narrative came in to where if you didn't agree with him, you're racist, and that is the slippery slope. Well, they didn't agree. With him, certain people, but let's, let's do two things here. Okay. Up front, when he won, the races didn't agree with him, period. Mm, right. The closet races didn't agree with him because, oh, uh, isn't he uh, Muslim or isn't he, 
And where's this birth certificate? Like all the, the all of them came out then. Then the people that didn't like what he was doing in general, mm-hmm. no matter what it was, if they didn't like it, that that was the third group of the good people who didn't like him, you know, or like what he was doing, or they said, oh, he's a bad president. Uh, after that, like there were the people that only wanted him to do one specific thing, and he did it. Oh, he's amazing, best person ever. And there's other people that was like, okay, well, he's doing more than so and so, or he's getting us out of this that somebody else already set up and then the third one was like overall I think he was just good you know so like there's there's those those three main sides you know for or against and and when it comes to the ones that didn't like him they pretty much when you if you do any real like you know digging you'll figure out you know they they fall into one of those three like I got my theories on Obama but that's not where I'm gonna started at. I'm going to start with more with Bush. Because I paid a little bit of attention to Bush. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I did so because I thought he spoke like a functioning retard. Uh, I never, ever in my life heard a grown man call terrorists evildoers. Kind of figured that would be like a Saturday morning cartoon type word. <laughs> but... <laughs> and he would just say things, and you'd be like, "What is he? What is he talking about?" You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and he would act like he really said something important, but he really didn't. If you listened, uh, Bush did a lot of stuff, but Bush, I think Bush was just given a a, a how to from his dad, or what his dad didn't get accomplished. So he was like, here, you're in there, so I need you to get these things done. So do you believe that, um, like, Dick Cheney was really pulling the strings on Bush? Or Bush was taking orders from someone else? I think it was more along that lines where it was the team was telling Bush kind of what to do. This this is better for the country. With him, real quick, with him, I always felt like he was the... Like in the, the the countries that have like presidents, even back in the day where they had like a king and they died and the oldest son is like 12 years old, like they have advisors, <laughs> yeah. but you don't have any real experience, you're naive as hell, mm-hmm. like either that or he was just, that was his role, play dumb, be stupid, like because we're setting up for the next, you know, three yeah. or four president, like I feel like it's either one of the two because there's no way, unless... You know, you were handed this dynasty, like, you, you didn't have, you you were pretty much handed your life. You know, your dad was, like, everybody holds him in such high esteem, you know, you didn't have, you didn't want for nothing, and then all of a sudden, you get of age, you're the president now, and you sound, like, he was representing the entire country. Like, people don't, he was the face of America, and, and it, everybody wonders why, like, nobody likes us. There's other reasons, but, like, at that moment, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you were representing everybody. It was like, oh, America? What do, what do I need to know about America? Oh, Bush, type that in. Just see, fool me once, sh- shame on you. Fool me, can't get fooled again. I was actually going to say that. Yeah, well, like, like, it's that's funny, there. <laughs> but he was serious. Yeah. It's like you e- have e- the e- world e- laughing at you. No, no, no. They're, they're laughing at you, not with you. Right. They're, laughing they're laughing at you. At, like, you're, and like I said, it can you're only be one or two things. Either you're, you're, really, this, you're this thing. Either you really are lacking that much everywhere, which makes sense, you know, because everything was handed to you. You didn't really have to do anything, fight for anything, try hard, or put any effort. Makes sense if it was that, but also going a little deeper. If that was a role you were supposed to play, then he played the hell out of it. He did a good job playing that role. He, like, people believe, still to this day, that he's a freaking idiot. He might be. Or he might just be doing right. what he was supposed to do. Because now, that, and that's where we get into the effectiveness part of it, like, with him. You know, like, to me, I think he was effective at what he was supposed to do. Which, if you, if you look at the past you see a very, very trendy thing with certain candidates. They always, since the start of, like, Nixon, Republicans always start a war on something. Yeah. You got the war on drugs. 
Mm. You got the war on terrorism. And what we're experiencing right now is the war on immigrants. But that is what they do. Now, let's go back and look at the effectiveness of the war on drugs. Has that been effective in this country? I mean, if anything, especially by all the uh, the document or the documentaries, uh, you know, about the CIA actually helping bring in the drugs. So when you say there's a war on drugs, you're not really saying there's a war on drugs. There's more of a of a of a agenda to get people into jail. The the thing about that was what they didn't tell you what was in the parentheses. It wasn't the war on drugs. It was the war for the control of where drugs went because if you look back at that time it was only in certain areas but where it hit it went rampant i think it was more so not the war on drugs but the war on drug users because yeah. you can fill your prisons if anyone knows anything about the prison system in this country mm -hmm. you can fill your prisons when you de declare that a thing creates another thing so drugs create drug users, drugs users create crime. Yep. So, but what they never tell you during that span on the war on crime is that the, own F the FBI findings showed that junkies weren't committing aggressive violent crime. Yeah. It was all petty crime. Yeah, possession and then possession theft, stuff like that. Dollars, but then the, you have to uh, factor in um, Clinton, because Bill Clinton came in with the three strikes. True. So when he came in with the three strikes, so if you get three petty possessions of weed, you're in prison. And right. now all of a sudden you're a number in the system. Then you got. Then you also got to look at the mandatory uh, the 25, sen sentencing yeah, and, yeah. and stuff like that for possession, stuff like that. Out of life. So the, the, the crazy thing is, to me personally, and I mean, I call people idiots just because sometimes the shoe fits is in America fear mongering is the greatest tool used by almost any candidate or politician oh yeah so if you look at the war on drugs from the 60s to now your war on drugs did nothing but create a country that is still in a drug problem which is the opioid epidemic that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. Because while they were spending money throwing in people with dime sacks of weed, small eight balls of crack, stuff like that, they're letting these big pharmaceutical companies take control and just run complete monopolies. Oh, yeah. So what people don't realize <clears throat> is the war on something creates a problem anyway. So let's look well, at. They're never upfront about the war in the first place. Of course not, because it's always based off of what they can get out of it, and then they know the actual problem that's going to come with it. They're going to be gone. They're not going to have to deal with it. They so just let's go back to Bush, or, or right? It won't be right. the 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 collateral damage won't be enough to reach them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So. Let's they ain't even, even got to be gone. They could happen then. <clears throat> look at Bush's war on terrorism. How many terrorist groups are we going to have? And the thing about that, hmm. also, he set into motion what's still going on today. Because all they have to do now, especially what, what, they're do, what, what they started doing with the immigrants, is like, oh, they're not sending over their best and their brightest. They're sending the murderers and rapists and immediately. Oh, that, snap. That, I'm, I'm going to get to that later. Like I'm, I'm actually I'm move, I'm move down the line so people can kind of get to see this connection that goes with all of it. Uh, the war on terrorism has done nothing but kill our brothers and sisters who fight for this country and create new terrorist groups. Yeah, that's all it's done. But you also have to go back and realize that the U.S. is one of the biggest sellers of ammunitions and weapons to the world. Everybody. Mm -hmm. And Bill put that in place. Mm -hmm. So you're getting shot with Stark Tech. <laughs> exactly, your own soldiers are getting killed with weapons that your country sold to. Who's killing them? It's like they got what we got. <laughs> so when you look at that, and you look at that trend, 
what it take the war on drugs to create an opi- opioid epidemic in like 25, maybe 30 years? I wonder what type of epidemic we're going to have with the war on terrorism in another 10, 15 years. Because it's going to create a problem. It's going to create a problem that you can no longer ignore because that's what the war on things do. They create problems. So... It sets in motion stuff that just builds up in a snowball effect. And it keeps going. So, when we get to Obama, Obama did to me one good thing. It depends on where you are, depends on what you think he did great, but as a working person, Obamacare was a complete disaster. I'm just putting that out there uh, because they didn't regulate health insurance companies, so health insurance companies were just jumping their rates up, which was just affecting people who was paying for insurance anyway. Oh, yeah. So, because that wasn't done, but there's always a market and money to be made in health, period it was a disaster for me but for some people who didn't have it or couldn't afford it pre-existing conditions. pre-existing conditions stuff like that maybe it helped them but personally from my standpoint it didn't help me or the working class people that's why they hated it uh, they what he did do good though was on the way out and eventually out he set an imagery and a kind of, he kind of flipped the script a little bit on a colored man. With some bit of, you know, with some white people, but mainly with our own people. Like, he made, the, he made being intelligent, conscious, cool. And that's why it's such a trend now. On a national level. On a national on a level. For that to be the thing yeah, he, is he, that. He represented us everywhere he went. So I give him credit for that. That's like the, to me, that's the great thing that he did is because, you know, you know how it was, you know, the dude who chose the book over the gap always got curbed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Always got made fun of. Yeah. Stuff like that. Chose knowledge over drugs. So therefore, that started to turn. And I noticed that towards the end of his run and then into this run, how, like, people are more willing to listen to you when you speak fluently, speak better, you know what I'm saying, and want to hear what you have to say. So I definitely give him credit for that. Now, as far as the other stuff with him, a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this, but I'm going to be real with you. Obama was not a black American. So, no. it's the only reason to me, personally, that he got to become the president. And what I mean, well, I'm not talking about the birth certificate or anything like that. I'm talking about the fact that he did not have a slave last name like we got. There is no way that white supremacy would ever put a man with a slave last name in the big house. In the White House. That wouldn't happen because not only are you admitting that someone that you thought is beneath you and most people still think is beneath you you put him in a top position so you find somebody who does not have those connections so kind of like with the killmonger black panther he was like throw me to see well my ancestors knew you see how he still incorporated separation Mm -hmm. of your people don't know what this is so it was your daddy's from Kenya he has no real connection to the slave the 300 plus years of torment and stuff like that that goes along with it so he will do and then when white women look at him and look at his baby pictures they see something they can relate to, which is his mom. Yeah. So well, that's actress. how he achieved that standard because they're not going to put a Negro with like a slave last name in the White House. That wasn't going to happen. Then I think on top of that, uh, I feel like if they, if, if, well, the reason why they won was because a whole lot of things would have been done different. Mm-hmm. Like, you have a real life. connection, a real it history. Been, 
oh, this is how we doing it? Okay, now that I'm behind the scenes, now that I'm the director, <laughs> okay, this is going to stop, this is going to stop. I need a black cast. Uh, yeah, for yeah. real. <laughs> His bodyguards will now be played by Mohammed Mohammed. Exactly. <laughs> Security! <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. you... You, you, have, you, dealt, you <laughs> have to understand that when it came down to him. Yeah. So a lot of stuff that continued to go on that was not great under Obama, to me, oh, no. it's like I didn't think like he had really any control over that. Like they were going to still play their tune, period. Well, it, it would have been easier to explain it away to somebody who didn't know the history of it. Mm-hmm. You know, like they say, oh, well... Uh, you know, it's been this many years, racism's dead, until you see it. Or until you see the 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 pocket, you know, the, 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 the closet, you know, racism, or the, the undertones. Like, if you were here, and you were raised in it, or your parents was like, okay, watch out for this, or watch out for that, then you would know what it was when you saw it, when they say, try to pass some, you know, BS law about this, and they like, mm, no, because this. Or, okay, so, does everybody... You know, all men who are created equal in the U.S., do they all benefit from this? Oh, no? Okay, veto. Not going to do it. Mm-hmm. It would be easier to explain it away to somebody who doesn't know the history fully, like lived it. Parents, grandparents, something, you know what I'm saying? Versus, oh, you're from over there. You've been over here for a few years, a couple decades, whatever. Like, you don't know because it's it, there's still, even though it's not a difference, like, oh, well, you know, uh, you're black, but you're not black, black. Like Everybody some people who do care about the, the the extreme details, you know, will see it like that. But at the end of the day, you know, if we all got pulled over before he's president, he was you just a nigga. But because he didn't have that that history, he'd be like, oh well, it's, oh, it's because of this, mm. or you know, don't worry about that. That's you know, have to just sign this here, here, and here, and then we'll take care of the rest. All you know is just. Kind of like with the Obama 2016 or the movie me and you watched. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It was you get to see that he spent most of the time in Hawaii, which Hawaii has a racist problem, but it's against it's the the native the Hawaii. natives against everybody. Yeah, they I'm don't sorry. basically don't they basically don't want you there. You. So and then it's only can really be afforded by white people. So basically, it's the natives against the white people. But. Uh, <laughs> But then he was raised there, and then he was taken overseas somewhere. I can't remember. Kenya. No, no. Remember, he, his mom remarried that one dude. I don't know if it was, like, India or Malaysia. I don't remember. Something like that. But she remarried somebody, and it was another part of the country. So he was then again in a different, completely different setup before he actually came over here. So there's no, you know, you got to think about it, like, Separate, like segregation was like fifty four years ago. You know what I'm That's saying? That's grandparents' age. That's grandparents' yeah. age. So when you have somebody disconnected from that, you know they're not gonna raise a fuss. They're oh, not yeah, gonna, yeah, they're yeah. not gonna You're they're not, not even gonna, a part of black history. They're not You're gonna right. bring up, you know, redlining, which would is what created the ghettos and the hoods we have here today, set up by um what's the president who used to be in a wheelchair. Roosevelt? Roosevelt, Bruce. Uh, you know, all that type of stuff that has contributed to what we have today and still contributes today, you ain't got no history with that. Like, so you don't really, like, civil rights movement is just names to you. Something that happened. This is something that went down. Mm-hmm. So for me, with him, I, I was like, when I seen him running and then, it, like, it was like him and Hillary or whatever, I thought about it. I said, he'll win. Because this is really based off of colorism and the fact that we're exiting a war. So the economy is going to be shit for like the first five, six years. And they'll blame him. And they'll blame him for it. Hmm. Because all all economies got to recover after a war, period. That's just the way it works. Like, economies reset. You see what I'm saying? So now we're going to go on over into Mr. Donald Trump. Because the economy resets and it resets with Obama leaving, things are things are better. He gets the credit for it. Things are good, and he gets the credit for it, which is fine. That's why I knew he wasn't going to be Hillary, because I ain't finna get that to no woman. She ain't finna get that credit. I wanted Hillary to win, because I wanted to see how sexist this country was. Mm-hmm. 
But you already saw her. She didn't. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was question a, answered. That's what I wanted to see. I was they, like, no, they was, think about those. They voted a black man in, or as close as we could get before they voted a white woman <laughs> who already has kind of a little bit of experience, you know, doing this kind of thing. First lady, I she's mean, probably pulling some strings behind her, pulling don't, something. Don't get me wrong, I, I do not like Hillary one bit. I'm from Arkansas. I, uh, <laughs> her true. and uh, Bill put more niggas in jail than Jim Crow. So, <laughs> I'm just being real. Nah, they, they just continued it. They started, <laughs> so, it was like, oh, I know what so, it is. So, I don't like her, but me, I was interested. I wanted to see how sexist this country was if she got the presidency. Because that's, that's the next. We already know how racist it is. Let's see how sexist it really is. Because to me, that's the, that's the, uh, the women can be a great turning point. I mean, they overshoot. Believe me, this me too. This me too movement is out of control. But at the same time, like for some strange reason, women believe stuff that is complete lies. And I just wanted to see how sexist the country really was gonna be with uh, with her in office because it would have came out. It would came out hard. It had to. But right. you know, I think there's a couple things that we need to kind of rewind back and and look at. Um, Well, um, I believe that Obama, he, he was the only, yeah, he was only the first black president because he didn't have the blood in him. He didn't have slavery blood in him. But technically, there could have been, uh, in my opinion, if you would have had Obama go against, um, uh, what is that uh, man's name? Uh, I can't remember, I forgot his name. Um, he was one of Bush's advisories. He was, um... Jim Carter? No, not at all. Um, I keep on seeing his face. I, I can't think of his name. He, he, a, he was a general. Is he the light general, skin? He's a mixed yeah. guy, right? Well, he, he's, he looks mixed, but he's not. He's just a light-skinned black dude. I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, not, Colin Powell. Powell. Colin Powell. There if you would have had Obama go against Colin Powell, Powell, Colin Powell would have won. Oh, Colin Powell would have won because he would have not only got the Republican vote, but he probably he would have pulled in some Democrat black people because Colin Powell had the ability to to, to do that uh, to actually uh, run against Obama. Obama had the charisma and he had the the change, but it's it's easy. It was easier for Obama to win against somebody who you look at as McCain because McCain had that old grungy type of look. If you just had the whole thing mute and you didn't look at and you didn't hear what they saying, you just put person by person. Who do you want to run this country? This fresh face, or do you want you know somebody who looks like what we had before? And then another thing that we need to cover is that Obama didn't. We haven't ended the wars uh, by no means whatsoever. All we did was we just spread because this was going around during the Arab Spring. So not only did we go into Iraq and Iran, we went into Libya at that time. We destabilized Libya. We helped uh, destabilize uh, Egypt and uh, the things that's going on with Turkey itself. And then the reason why. Um, uh, I mean, we even got to a point to where we ran out of bombs. We were dropping so many bombs. Right, right, right. So the things that was happening underneath Obama abroad um, really was kind of like keeping the war machine going because people were still profiting from it. Hillary Clinton was still profiting yeah, from it. Oh, yeah. uh, a lot of people in the State Department were still profiting from it. And then that's not even including the uh, the fact that um, Obama was um, and his, uh, let's see, Obama and a couple other members were talked about when they was running guns Operation Fast and the Furious, where they was taking guns, running them through New Mexico to see where they was getting into the cartels, but the cartels supposedly lost them. So we were supplying guns to them, and then they were somehow getting back into the U.S., killing United States citizens. And so when that whole thing blew over, everybody just kind of like brushed it under. Now, so if you, if you take that scenario, and then as Obama's leaving office, and then you have the, the situation between Trump and Hillary, uh, Hillary is a, a lifetime politician. And so not only is she a lifetime politician, she's probably the worst option that you could have put for the Democrats because of people knowing her history. And that's one thing that Trump kept on hitting on. If anybody knows anything through the campaign whatsoever, it's that Trump kept on hitting on how many emails did she delete? How many did she do this? She's corrupt. She's this. And so he, he, as somebody who is in entertainment, he just played the entertainment game against her. And she kept on thinking, nobody's going to elect this guy because I deserve it. I mean... Or he's an A-hole. Like, well, he's, he was... He's she this, was, he's that. Her, her 
stance on even how black people she went on to a uh i think it was hot 97 and then they asked her it's like so uh hillary what do you keep on you at all times she's like i keep hot sauce on me like when you say shit like that mm -hmm. and you you say that into a for a black audience like hey hey niggas i keep black sauce <laughs> I, I keep hot sauce you know what i'm saying so we're like both for me right yeah, we're cool man right? Oh, and then when, when black people, like certain black people started getting around her, they was like, uh, what happened with your husband putting all those black people in jail? She was like, oh, you know, I'm sorry about that. Mm -hmm. But she she never did say that she was going to do anything to erase it. Oh, no. Or do anything different. No, because she needed to keep the system going. Well, that's what I'm saying. The system going to roll with or without you anyway. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when I said that the the war efforts is like was like they basically died down they weren't top news anymore oh yeah you know what i mean yeah they kept going and they're still going well, they've been the, going the, the thing with that is they didn't necessarily die down there was just a whole bunch of other stuff going on here that it had your attention yeah duh <clears throat> i mean because you guys look at it like this like obama's dropping bombs on somalia which is like a starved nation talking about looking for terrorists i'm like how are you bombing the places People are dying from starvation. They can't even for, get something to eat. Looking for terror. Getting guns, bro. You know what I'm saying? So we're looking for extremists. So I mean, bombs, but again, then again, the machine keeps rolling. So jump back to Bill, mm -hmm. selling all them guns, selling all them weapons. Yeah, that's going on. Right. Bush gets it. It's going on. Right. But now, wait a minute. But now we need a target. Now we need somewhere where I can direct where this goes so I can so I can justify it. Because if I don't justify it, the media is gonna put a spin on it if anything happens. Well the target actually I mean, needed resources. resources too. Because exactly. we we if we could have chose chosen a place to liberate, we could have chose somewhere that had no resources whatsoever. But we needed to take somewhere that actually had resources to where we needed to control. And, 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 that, and so, that plays in for how so long. We saved you. Here. Give us yeah. half of everything you got. Right. Good. So yeah. So the machine continues to roll. It didn't stop with Obama. It was just like, no, no. You know what I'm saying? Thing is, so, okay. so with with that, I completely understand. Like I said, Hillary, by no means. I just wanted to see how how sexist this country was going to be when she got in. But uh, but the machine would have kept going anyways. Like, and I honestly, I know like Trump just got in and things like that. But we're gonna learn here very quickly. The machine's gonna keep going. It's going to keep going. And he can throw up. You know, he can use the Nixon tactics tactics because that's all they really are. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's all they are. They, you're just playing off fear mongering. You're playing off people's fears. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna take your jobs. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. If I'm skilled enough, no one's taking my job. But at the same time, that has always worked. That's where labor unions even came from. It was they, which would be us, are going to take our jobs, mm -hmm. which was the white people. Mm -hmm. So labor unions was formed for that reason, to keep the niggas out of the job market. So the fear mongering always works. It's going to continue to work because the biggest... The biggest downfall any person has, period, is their imagination. Mm -hmm. So you plant that seed, the worst shit's gonna Inception. happen. Like the worst thing's gonna happen. Don't get me wrong. Like I was in Brownsville, Texas. Like I stayed there. Like I would never live there, ever. Not because I think that the people are bad. It's just, nigga, I know what a hood looks like. <laughs> you can you can put whatever type of color person you want to put in that mug. I know what a hood looks like. You know what I'm saying? I know what poverty looks like. So therefore, if I got something that person does not, black, white, brown, Asian, it doesn't matter. Otherwise. They're going to come try to take from me because they feel like I have more than them. That's fucking period. That's just the way that works. Mm -hmm. You look at a hood, you look at a trailer park. Crime, drugs. They're both there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So, so the whole, you know, like with Trump, like, I don't, I just miss a lot of stuff with him. It's, you know, shithole places. Me, I'm sorry. You haven't traveled enough if you have not called a place a shithole. Because I've called plenty of places in this country a shithole. 
I'm like, nigga, this is like you shit. You ain't gotta leave your <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not living here. Or like, I'm actually gonna stay at that motel down there. This is a shithole. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like now that. Yeah, you'll you'll find it quicker. Like, <laughs> hotels and, and, and you actually the, the whole the type of hotel will determine the area. Like no matter how many stars they throw up, like you walk in there and it looks like they just cleaned up a crime scene. Or like you could just kind of picture somebody on the ground. Or I'm not sure if this bed was clean. Uh, I see a lot of white spots on the rug. You know yeah, what I'm like, saying? Like ah, I've been to like. cities. You know what I'm saying? And people who know me can quote me on this. I went to Freeport, Texas. I told the dude who was going there with me that place is a shithole, not because there's Mexicans there. Not because there's Texans there. It's because every time it rains an inch, the power goes out. Or if the wind blows five miles per hour, the shit goes out. That's a shithole place to me. You know wow. what I'm saying? You can't keep your power on. That's a shithole. Get your stuff together. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like, step your game up. So, like, therefore... Especially if it's a habit of it happening. Like, you're doing something wrong if it happens every time. With me, with Trump, the stuff he says does not affect me because he's just talking. He is a entertainer. That's what entertainers do. Entertainers know how to keep the person's eye on them. That's what they do. Yep. My concern with Trump is it actually doesn't really have much to do with Trump himself, but just with the country. Because the moment you start electing people because of their money and because of their pop like because of their known face or popularity, but no real c- credentials to back up what they can do. Mm-hmm. For that that's job. going to become a trend. So like I told my homeboy, I said, think of Trump like a clown, right? In a car. Oh, when he nice. steps out of the car, what happens with clowns in cars? There's more more they of them come and they get follow. worse. They get worse and they get worse. They're more ridiculous, more over the more time. ridiculous. And our model is based off of Rome. You see what I'm saying? This this entire model we have here in America is based off of Rome. That's where the founding fathers took a lot of stuff from Rome and from the UK. So when you look at one of the last known Rome emperors, he was a fucking showman. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He wasn't. They, they had him kill himself. He wasn't. He wasn't even qualified enough to be an emperor. Yeah. So to me. That's the issue that I'm afraid of. Is like the generations are getting dumber and dumber and dumber to the point to where we're going to see people like worse than what Trump really is. Yeah. No qualifications whatsoever. In there, just, I'm going to do this. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, think like, about where he stands or, or, or the things that he's done and what he said and his his mental status and then imagine that getting passed on to his kids and then there's other people like him and their kids I mean it's, it's they're attacking it from two fronts people are definitely getting dumber but certain information is being re- less withheld. readily available stuff is getting changed history right. books are getting changed right they're taking certain things and it twists a little bit here or they just straight up changing it Why, yeah uh, American history one of them so that's my issue, not so much with Trump. Trump just shows me what's happening abroad. You feel does, what I'm saying? Does, does if you look at, right you know, he said, we're going to build a wall, right? Okay. Like, he's letting you know what he's going to do or what he plans to do. So if you go look at all the land that was taken down there in the South from American landowners for the, for the divider fence, which will then become where the wall is, the government is just taking it. But then you can't really blame that on Trump because while everybody was talking about Sandy Hook and Colorado shootings and stuff like that in the news Mm -hmm. and everybody's attention was diverted, Obama was signing uh, executive orders that were empowering the government's ability to take stuff from you. So now it's being written in for someone else to use. Mm -hmm. And that's the way, that's what I mean by the machine keeps going. Like it's, everybody thinks, oh, Trump is going to be out of here or something. It doesn't matter. The machine you know, is going to keep motion. going. What he puts mm-hmm. in motion is going to keep rolling. Well, I think that sometimes <clears throat> uh, what is lost in translation is 
because somebody has a high likability, they can say one thing, and if somebody says the exact same thing, but you don't like them, then you're like, oh, we don't like what you say. You because you can effect. you can honestly put a clip of Obama, I think he was, I, I think it was in 2006 or 2008, and you can put hit that right next to Trump, and he's saying the exact same thing. He yeah. says, we need a wall, we need to deport people. If you look at the stats from Obama, he deported more people than Bush, and he deported more people than Clinton together. They actually, uh, a lot of the illegal immigrants uh, actually called him the deporter-in-chief because he deported millions and millions that. and millions of people. I see, I remember so that. he has he has no problem deporting people. And so when you go to Trump, and Trump is saying the exact same thing, it's, oh, well, we don't like that because you're saying it. And then if he if he was like, okay, well, I'm going to play this video. Okay, Obama said it. Well, 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 what what is the reason? The, well, you don't like when some guy when one person says it it's fine when another person says it I don't like it because I, I'm gonna be real with you it's because it's the same way if a white person says something if a black person says something mm -hmm. it's the same thing everyone's mind is readily divided you see what I'm saying mm -hmm. it's readily it's readily divided you I've seen a clip where they've taken Bush's Obama's and Trump's and when you listen to them they're saying the same shit mm-hmm they're all saying the same thing. It's everyone's mind is readily divided, and and I sit there and I and I look at it and I say, okay, so he can say it, but he can't say it, or he can say it and just change like one or two words, but it means the same thing, but he can't say it that way. Mm -hmm. So it shows you what has happened with colorism, politics, yeah. religion, and stuff like that. It's, it's a te teaching mechanism that just puts you here or here. That's all it does. Yeah. Here or here. Trump ain't saying new shit at all. Now, they might exact policies that another administration wasn't using, but the policies are still there right. to be used. Right. They're just using those policies. Right. So, that, that that's, 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 I mean, there's some difference, but... There's things right now where people are like, how oh, the cops are just kicking in people's doors and blah, 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 and yada, yada, yada. Well, you go back to Nixon. <laughs> the no-knock rule was written in back then. <laughs> <laughs> so if we, no. so that, that's the thing. So maybe one president doesn't really, you know, maybe he'll condemn it, you know what I'm saying, or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. to place for towards however the people feel. And then another one may be like, 100% no-knock on everybody. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's, it's, that goes back to the the biblical principle, the threefold uh, of the levels of development. You know, one person plants a seed, one cultivates, and then one reaps the benefits. Or speaking in terms of people, you know, the grandparents make the money, the parents maintain it, and the kids, the grandkids spend it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, as far as that's concerned, because there's a lot of stuff that somebody had established, you know, two, three decades ago that are still, like, either rolling Bingo. or that are building them up momentum, you know. But with what, with what you were saying earlier about how three people can say the same thing, it's always been like that, but you also have to look at the context and context and what they said, how they said it, and what they, what was meant behind it. Because so far, I haven't seen, uh, in all the ones that I've seen, what is, as far as, like, Trump speeches or, you know, addresses and there has not been one time where he hasn't said something that was, like, racist as hell. So for him to say, get them all out of here, it's like, oh, hmm, white man saying get them all out of here. Uh, they might have all had the same idea in mind. Okay, everybody's coming here. It's too many people. You know, y'all got to go. But as far as Obama is concerned, I haven't heard as much stuff that was racist or, 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 not, or, or not as frequently. Even if he has said something racist, it's never been... Every single time you show your face is shown. Every single tweet, every you know what I'm saying. Like so, for him saying, you know, oh well, and even to to, to top that off, he it was never just there's too many of them. It was always oh they're sending over their criminals, they're they're doing this, they're doing that. It's, it's 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 not that you know there's too many of them. It's I don't like the fact that you know when they come over here this happens and the fact that. It's a, such a small percentage, you know, that he's blowing it up, makes it even That's worse. For, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big percentage. Here's a factor. Here's a factor. If you get in an influx 
of one million people within a year who have no skill, who have basically hardly any knowledge of your language and culture whatsoever, and then they have the ability to get a job, what community does that affect the hardest? The poor communities. Okay, so if you if you take in the poor communities, let's say temp agencies, right? Okay, I'm going to a temp agency and I want to get a job that, you know, okay, this job will pay $12 an hour based off of low work, low skill. All you gotta do is press a button or wrap this pallet whatsoever. And then all of a sudden you get an influx of 10 people who will be like, I came from a country where I was making like a dollar maybe every couple of days. I will take that job at minimum wage. Who does that affect? People in that area. Okay, so when you get an influx of low income people who are basically who will who will work for almost anything, they will come in and they affect the they actually affect the black community more than any other community when you get an influx in of people. Because what's interesting is the support for Donald Trump from black people has actually doubled since last year because the economy is rolling. So when you have an influx of people who are consistently coming to this country, okay, if I know that all I got to do is cross this invisible line and I have to make it to California, if I go to California, they're going to provide me with food, clothes, shelter, and if a job if I choose to work. Or I can just still stay home and get on benefits. That My, my life is almost 100 times better here than it was there. But the people who are working, i.e. you, me, him, if we're working, we have to take care of them, especially if we're residents of that country, right? Or a residents of that state. So in what way do having a whole bunch of people come into a country that are not necessarily adding to the country, but more taking from it? How does that help the community or how does that help the country as whole? Especially if people are coming in and they're taking your social security number and they're taking jobs away uh, if you want to complain about, oh, we need a $15 minimum wage, you think a Mexican coming from Mexico who's barely living at all is going to complain about $15 or he'll t happily take whatever minimum wage that state has and live based off of benefits? I get I get that 100%. I just want to say that was the, I want to roll back to what you said about how one person says one thing and another person says another thing. Right. That actually is a great example of with let's say, Obama and Trump, right? Mm -hmm. When Obama was going around the world talking to leaders and apologizing for the American ignorance and stuff like that, what did the what did the red side call that? They called it his apologetic tour. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Calling us, calling American people the ignorant of the ways of the world, so forth and so on. Trump can get on a podium and call the people in that state stupid. And they'll cheer his ass on. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But they're not up in arms and all the other type of stuff like there was with Obama with his apologetic tour when really Obama was just saying the truth about the American ignorance. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How many people today will still say, you better eat that food because there's people starving in Africa? I still say that. You see what I'm saying? That's yeah. Probably. When there's people starving in America. That's right. So. I say that too. That has... That will, that will always go down. My thing is, it's I know it's fear-mongering, targeting, targeting, because Trump will talk about the Muslims. He will talk about building a wall in a specific area, which you know is targeted towards certain people. But what about the 350,000 European uh, immigrants that's coming to this country? Mm -hmm. Are we going to build a net for their ass? <laughs> that's not going to happen. Yeah. He don't bring that up. Because the, the European e immigrants look like him, and they mm -hmm. look like his base. And then when they come over here, they just blend right in. So, with me, it's, I can really understand that. Like I said, I've been down stuff. I've lived in Texas. I know what that does to an economy. I know where they sit them at. They're going to put them in the areas with, that's why the black and browns beef, like they do. Mm hmm you know what I'm saying? They're mm -hmm. going to put them, no, nah, y'all need to go there with them. Y'all can't stay in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So I understand that 100%, but I still know, I can still tell you that, yes, we need to cut back on immigration for the economy, and I completely agree with that, but I can still tell you when someone's fear tar fear mongering targeting. Yeah, and it's I believe the, the Democrats, especially in certain areas, if you, <clears throat> if I go to your house, or if you see a stranger on the street and they come to your house, do they have a say-so in what you eat? 
or do they have a say so in how you dictate the house? Then how do you give somebody who doesn't belong in your country say so in your politics? Because if you can come from Mexico to California, you have a voter ID card. So how do you have a say so in somebody's politics and then when you're over there saying America's this, America's that, America's this, America's that, speaking negative wise, but you're saying that while still reaping the benefits of America. So that's one thing that, that when I see that, that Democrats are saying, oh, we need to love more, we need to open up, we have this, we have that. That's not necessarily true because all we're saying is we want you in here so you can vote and then we'll push you to the side. Yeah, let me let me be very clear on that. What a lot of people don't understand about the blue and the red, it's that whole ordeal. The blue want control just like the red do. Mm-hmm. But the way the blue wants control versus the red is the only difference. Like... The blue is always benefiting off of minority tragedy, minority uh, hardships. They always benefit off that. That's their only game, is to benefit from that. But they sell you the back line of the dream, which is everybody being equal. You see what I'm saying? But they still want to tell you how to speak. They want to tell you... Which, what you can have in your house and stuff like that. That's still control. Don't get me. Don't get it twisted. That's mm-hmm. still control. You know what I'm saying? They're just trying to sell you the, the 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 dream in the back. You see what I'm saying? Now, if you take the red, the red are trying to sell you the dream in the back, which is well, you know, you can work hard and become whatever you want to become. You know what I'm saying? But we know that shit ain't true. You know what I'm saying? In this country, that's not that's not the way that it works. It's people are heavily connected. You can get in a job, it'd be a dead-end job, you know what I'm saying? So now you got 10, 15 years off your life, and now you're trying to do something else or get another skill or, you know what I'm saying, go to college for four more years, which is going to put you in more debt. Super debt. Super debt. So we know that dream in the back as well. They basically just want your ass to go to work, contribute to the, the economy, and throw your ass in an unmarked grave. That's what they want from you. You know what I'm saying? So as the influx of things increase, food, housing, all that type of stuff continues to go up, and they don't level out the market or control the market because that's their buddies, that's their friends. Capitalism, that's all their friends. So then you're working 70 hours, 60 hours a week, and they take in $1,100, $1,200 in taxes. So they're trying to sell you the dream in the back as well. They're both dreams that you got to get through a bunch of BS that you won't be able to get to probably within your lifetime to get to. But that's that's how they play their game. You see what I'm saying? Look at Monsanto. Y'all right. see what happened with that? Monsanto was given all that all that ability to sit there and do their own testing on their products and tell you there's nothing in it and all that type of stuff. And then here goes a dude who's been spraying working every single day, working hard, has a family, spraying their product, and now he has cancer. Probably like a year left oh, to yeah. live. Mm-hmm. Because that's what the red mentality gets you. Oh, that company's growing. They're hiring people. That's going to boost the economy. We're going to let them. We're going to cut them slack here. We're going to cut them slack there. So next thing, now you know that Monsanto is the biggest soybean and coin producers and distributors. And now, that crap that is being sprayed, they spray it on all their products. So it's in everyone's household. You see what I'm saying? The red will destroy the natural resources to make money. That's their negativity. Mm -hmm. The blue want to take, the blue want you to be free, but they want to control what type of free you have. They're going to write the definition for free for you. Well, I mean, we're seeing that now in the in the version of what you consider hate speech, <laughs> because there's because hate speech is is very subjective. Mm-hmm. You know, if I say something that you don't like, well, that's hate speech. That's hate speech. No, that's that's free speech. The uh, I believe, uh, you know, when Alex Jones got censored off all the platforms, the the best way to combat hate speech is more speech. You can't just shut somebody up because if you tell a dude, if you if you say to somebody that, um, you know, people are coming after me, people are coming after me, they're gonna try to shut me down. And then you actually see him shut down 
that makes his point, regardless if he was right or not, that makes him more valid. Like, mm, well, he was saying that they was going to shut him down, and now they've essentially wiped him from the internet and under the term of hate speech. But on top of that, even with that, the fact that they went through all that effort and hard work to try to actually get him, get, get him completely like erased, means that he was on to something. Like, there's, they don't, they're not going to do that. For somebody who's, you know, reviewing bubblegum. Who's just, bubble gum, who's you know just saying? shooting rhetoric who's, yeah. and stuff like oh, that. We're getting when close you, to midterms, though. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. We're getting, Even so. No, yeah. But when you have hate speech like that, it doesn't stop there because, uh, you know, as you know, net neutrality got repealed. Mm -hmm. So net neutrality needs to be treated like a utility and you just can't throttle people. So where does hate speech stop? Because what if Cox said, well, we don't like the internet. We don't like stuff that you're putting on your YouTube YouTube can shut you down, and then like we don't even have to provide the internet to you because right. you are violating our terms of service, i.e., hate speech. But that's the thing; they've been doing that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like Comcast was doing that to Netflix. They was like, uh, "You need to pay us this so so amount of money, or we're gonna throttle all your customers." Yeah, and then there's nothing done about it because the red believe in capitalism. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter if you have they say the, the market will decide. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you have like the biggest, you know, jolly green giant leg up over somebody that's way down here. Oh well, it's capitalism, so you just need to find a way to maneuver and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how so many things get crushed and stomped out. You know what I'm saying? Man, sit here made a, made an engine that can run a hundred miles to a gallon, winds up dead in a desert somewhere. You really think them guys, all the automakers and the oil industry is going to let that happen when you can just drive from New York to California like on $2? No. <laughs> like, let me fill up. No. And that's the issue. Like, like I said, both of them, that dream they're trying to sell you in the back, no. Remember I told you, like, this is a game mm -hmm. and you need to learn how to maneuver? Yeah. That's why we need to teach our kids how to maneuver because yeah. we're yeah. most likely age we're at and what we've learned stuff like that it's going to be real hard but we can basically who said it someone said like pay the black tax basically pass that knowledge on so that when they get into it left right you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. all these all this is already known mm -hmm. and then when they get to man. right that's what I'm saying so once they get to where okay now I need to start figuring out how this happens because like he he wasn't here when this was something that was done and so forth and so on so they're both it's just it's, it's both a game like you can get in a podium and one person can say i'm cutting taxes you know what i'm saying but in the fine print it's like you got to make this amount of money to mm -hmm. this amount of money so everybody's gonna cheer like hell yeah and then when they get their checks hold on nigga hell no wait a minute don't just cutting taxes you know what i'm saying oh no you you're a hundred dollars short from being in that club. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. that's the way it has always been. Bill, hey, I'm finna increase taxes. No, we don't want that. We don't want that. I'm just gonna do it on junk food. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, junk food is bad. But then most everybody lives off junk, junk food. food now, so you're paying that tax they, they even anyway. A, a whole room for it. It's called a pantry. <laughs> <laughs> like you're paying that tax now. I'm going to do it on fast food restaurants. That's what Obama said. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to increase tax. It will, it will make people want to eat healthier. Nigga, McDonald's lines still be wrapped around the store. For, like, for days. They still, they, they going to hit you. They going to get you. You know what I'm saying? I always They're look at. just going to pass that price off to the consumer. Boom. Exactly. Oh, That's all they do. See, that dollar menu has shrunk. <laughs> dollar menu used to have like 15 things. The dollar menu is not things. the dollar menu. It ain't even dollar menu. It's no the more. dollar plus some dollar menu. Some. Yeah. Dollar and a half. Hold on real quick. Let's see. I'm at the stop. Or you get what's it like? Two for four dollars or something. It's the dollar plus. That's why I call it the dollar plus some menu. Dollar things. Hey, man, let me get a uh, double cheeseburger. Yeah, that'll be a uh, dollar fifteen. Nigga, it's supposed to be a dollar, nigga. You lying. I